Okay, starting our stream tonight and testing audio and video. It looks like things are going pretty good for Periscope and Twitter, so no major problems being seen here. If you're just joining us, stay tuned. We'll be getting to the forecast here in just a little bit. And as of right now, signal looks good on both ends, so we'll go ahead and invite in our Facebook passengers for the evening as well. And as of right now, things continuing to look pretty quiet across much of the area. Joining us uh, with Twitter and Periscope, our Facebook video uh, people. Starting right now, time is just a little bit past 8.35 on Tuesday evening. If you are just joining us, got some fairly quiet conditions, a little bit more quiet than what we saw last night and across the area, but we're going to continue to see, again, the possibility of some thunderstorms out there into the course of the rest of the week. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Hopefully everybody can hear me without too much any other major problems out there and if we do have again any problems with uh, audio just throw something at the screen and I'll do what I can to make certain everything's working. For those of you who have never joined us before I'm meteorologist Austin Onik for News Channel 3. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, ideas, criticisms and complaints if you absolutely must austin.onik at wreg.com at the lower portion of the screen down here. Coming up, we'll take a look at the forecast into the next several days. Warm and humid, but nowhere near as August-like as it could be, so good news on that. If you can't stick around, more on the forecast available in the blue bar down here at the bottom portion of your screen, and social media information here, over there, and up here. And don't forget about our main website for weather, wreg.com slash weather. If you're on Facebook, drop your uh, current conditions, weather if you've got it, and your location into the comments section and looking again at the possibility for as of right now the chances of rain lingering in parts of the mid-south but not a great deal out across much of the area tanya miller cunningham welcome to the show waiting on the kids to run in thanks for this well glad to help out and thanks for joining us for this evening why don't we go ahead and get started as we always do with a look at what's going on on radar for this evening which again so far tonight does not really amount to much we're not seeing a lot out there where it comes to rainfall trying to get the focus working but so far not seeing a lot of of, uh, good information there for right now. What's left around the metro area is just basically lots of humidity and moisture. Not really seeing, again, a lot of major activity out there. Moisture continuing to stick around portions of the Mid-South. Some of that, it looks like, could be, again, a few developing showers out across the area. We're especially looking over northern Mississippi between Holly Springs and Abbeville. Possible shower developing there. Could also be a flock of birds heading into around the reservoir area, possibly. A little bit farther to the south of that, Como, Sardis, Batesville, in that location. Looks like, again, you are getting a few showers south of Sledge, making its way down toward the Clarksdale area. Whoops, sorry about that. There we go. Showing, again, most of the activity we've been watching here heading to the south-southwest or west-southwest for the most part, and that's going to be, again, continuing to see some light scattered showers going on through northern Mississippi. Welcome to Alice McGowie. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Sissy Karakard, welcome from Kudzu Creek Nubians. Hope the goats are doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Jer Jersey Don Harris, uh, not locking up tonight. We switched over to this Channel 3 station iPad, and that's linked into the Internet remotely, so that seems to be working a little bit better than tinfoil around the receiver here. Renee Vaughn Homewood, Forest City, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. And to everybody else for popping on through on Periscope and Twitter. North of I-40, again, not a lot going on at this time. We do have, again, little, if anything, taking place. Slightly drier air here than what we're seeing down to around just areas south of I-40. That stationary front sticking around, so that's where we're seeing the best chance of a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms across portions of the area. So that's where the heaviest activity is located at this time, and that's where we're going to continue to see, again, uh, the potential for more areas of showers more than anything else. Maybe a rumble of thunder, really doubt that, but it is still possible that we might see something like that throughout the rest of the evening into portions of mainly northern Mississippi, but that's going to be mainly about it. I'd like to see some of our weather bug cameras. All you have to do is go to wreg.com slash webcams for more. Plenty of them across the area tonight, including some very nice sunset pictures out there from Jesseville, Arkansas, around the area of the Jesseville School District, a very nice post sunset view. 
from the area there and also a few clouds again drifting through uh, portions of the area looking around St. Francis in Cordova you can see some lingering sunsets going on there uh, at this point in and around St. Francis this is also coincidentally where I will be on Monday the 21st we'll be doing a lot of eclipse stuff including hopefully some broadcasts during the morning with the kids to let you know more about what's going on with eclipse preparations we'll be doing that rain or shine so join me for more from St. Francis on Monday Monday the 21st for more information there again more of our weather bug cameras available at wreg.com slash webcams let's go ahead and get into it and show you what's going on again for tonight we've got again one storm system down to our south and that's kind of wibbly wobbling its way back and forth across the area and as it does it's going to be again bringing us more and then less chances of showers and thunderstorms this is not the map i was looking for hang on for just one moment there we go that's better now, mostly what we're looking at here, again, into the rest of the next several days is going to be, again, isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms. Looks like we have a new cold front dropping our direction. Might be, again, getting a little bit more weaker as it goes, again, throughout the rest of the next couple of days. That's what we're looking at here over the Plain States, dropping into around my hometown of Topeka, Kansas. So that'll be bringing in more chances of rainfall coming on through. If you look a little bit farther to the south of us, there's that stationary front that's been kind of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And as it does... That's where we see, again, some decent amounts of showers out there. So, Renee Vaughn Homewood, uh, nice slow rain in Forest City. We might be picking that up into the next couple of days, but very hit or miss otherwise with chances of rainfall going on through out there. Could even be some thunderstorms from what it looks like. Anything in the red hatched area is the possibility of more thunderstorms across much of the Mid-South area. Currently in the Mid-South, again, the National Weather Service not seeing much of anything going on in the way of major problems. The probability for widespread hazardous weather across the Mid-South is fairly low, and that goes for all the metro area and the rest of the Mid-South. Thunderstorms possible, yes, but just not seeing much of anything out there when it comes to anything involving heavy amounts of thunderstorms out across much of the area. Let's go ahead and get into the forecast and show you more about what we're going to be looking for into the rest of the next couple of days. Low temperatures tonight, upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. Not much of any change going on there and that isolated chance of a shower possible. Another warm and muggy day tomorrow with temperatures back in the mid to upper 80s. And then chances of showers and thunderstorms continue mostly down to around northern parts of Mississippi. That's where you see that dark green color shaded in there for tomorrow into tomorrow night. Low temperatures tomorrow evening, Wednesday night, and Thursday morning back in the upper 60s to right around the lower 70s. High temperatures on Thursday looking at numbers back into around the upper 80s to lower 90s. Better chances of showers and thunderstorms as that green area of better possibility of precipitation moves its way back to the north. That's where we'll be seeing, again, better possibilities of some showers and quite possibly some thunderstorms out there as well. Thursday night, not as cool. Temperatures only back into the lower to mid-70s for lows. And isolated chances of showers, not great, but still possible across much of the area. And then we get into Friday. Temperatures again back in the high 80s with plenty of humidity. So heat index temperatures toward the end of the week will be pushing the mid to upper 90s with all that humidity out there. It's going to be very much on the warm and muggy side. And chances of showers and thunderstorms from Friday right on into Saturday. In fact, more chances of rainfall for Saturday as we see high temperatures. Temperatures on Saturday back in the mid to upper 80s. Looking into the weekend, again, temperatures also in the mid to upper 80s for Sunday and also seeing chances of showers and thunderstorms. In fact, heading up to about a uh, 50 to 60 percent chance for Sunday. So for the weekend, if you have outdoor plans, go ahead and keep them. But as of right now, you will probably be seeing the possibility of a few more showers and thunderstorms into the weekend, which could spell some uh, par partially damaged plans out there again for the weekend. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be doing anything outdoors. Iris Barrow, or Ines, 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 Ines Barrow, hope I'm saying that correctly. Where's Marla this evening? She was in the other room just across the hall from here. My daughter just got home from work and more than likely just 
took her outside to do her business and probably taking her upstairs. Uh, she sleeps mainly with uh, my daughter upstairs in her room along with our, one of our other dogs, Ella, who stays up there with her in the overnight hours. Occasionally she stays in our room, but most of the time she's upstairs with Emma sleeping away. Uh, thank you for, very much for asking. We'll see if we can get her back on the air again relatively soon. Let's go ahead and switch to the tropics real quick and show you more about what's going on there. We have, again, a couple of systems out into uh, the tropics which are starting to cause some concern out there. Franklin, again, winds at about 40 miles per hour. It's a minimal tropical storm. It's right over the southern Gulf of Mexico, leaving the Yucatan Peninsula and making its way into the southern Gulf. We also have a disturbance out into, again, the tropics over portions of the middle portions of the Atlantic. Zero percent chance of a, any development with this over the next several days. But then toward five days out, this thing starts developing about a 40 percent chance out there. So we have these two systems for right now. Doesn't look like anything coming in from off of Africa, but that's something else we're going to have to watch. First one, Franklin, again, making its way right over the Yucatan Peninsula, which you can see the Yucatan Peninsula outline, that faint red right there. Decently healthy, but not as powerful as it could be. And as of right now, that storm system, again, making its way back over to the area close to around me. Just hang on a second. That's the wrong one. There we go. Uh, that one, again, making its way right across Mexico. And it looks like this might wind up being a system for the Pacific, if this survives, making its way uh, all the way on through there. Randy Wilbanks, welcome to the show. Will we be able to see the meteor shower Saturday night? Uh, possibly, but with all the clouds and the rainfall that we're looking at out there, it doesn't look like it's going to be looking all that good, uh, unfortunately, for all that. We'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's going on with our other system out into the Atlantic. At this time, it looks like it's going to be avoiding most of the area around the Lesser Antilles, the area around Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and the Bahamas. And it looks like it's going to be heading right back on up, taking a bit of a curve right outside the east coast of the United States. But if I were traveling anywhere between, say, uh, Miami up to DC, I would be watching this with a lot of interest because if this takes a little bit more of a westerly track, this could put it on shore possibly for the Outer Banks of North Carolina, anywhere between there and Florida. So this definitely bears watching, even though it may not be much right now. Definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on what we may be seeing out of this. Again, this is just the conventional wisdom for these computer models at this time, showing again a couple of the storms leading it very close to the edge of the Bahamas, and then working its way back up the East Coast states. But that comes very close to the Outer Banks and Chesapeake Bay. So this is going to be something that we need to watch very carefully over the next couple of days. So definitely want to keep it updated on News Channel 3. Again, Franklin, not a major concern for right now. But if you're heading anywhere toward central Mexico or down toward the south of the Baja Peninsula anytime soon, this could also be a problem for you. So please keep it tuned for more on that. Let's take a look as we go into, again, uh, the weekend. As Randy Wilbanks was asking for Saturday, We'll take a look at some of the sky cover out there for Saturday night, uh, roughly the, the, the first couple of days of the peak of the season for the uh, meteor shower coming up. What you're looking at here, the gray colors indicates pretty good socked in by cloud cover out there. And the percentage of cloud cover out there is ranging at about... 85% for the metro area and for the rest of the area all the way on through the Mid-South. So unfortunately for Saturday, let's go ahead and go about 24 hours after that. Hopefully Sunday has some good news for us, but unfortunately I'm probably doubting that. That also showing us uh, cloud indexes of nearly 78% coverage around Union City. 84 around Memphis, 85% coverage around Jonesboro, 90% uh, coverage down toward Tupelo and Clarksdale. So unfortunately at this point, uh, if you get any clear skies over the next couple of days, next couple of evenings, I should say, that's where you want to watch out for the possibility of meteors out there. If you have any clear skies whatsoever, take advantage of it because over the next few days, we've got plenty of cloud cover out there, and that could be just a bit of a problem out there. Dana Thorpe Chisholm, welcome from Grenada, Mississippi, or Grenada, depending on how you pronounce that. Kansas has both of them up there. Uh, we look again for more information about the tropics. Great website to go to, Mike's Weather Page. 
at SpaghettiModels.com. It's a nickname for all those computer models that I just showed you, that if you take a look at some of the way these things look, they kind of resemble uh, wet noodles of spaghetti lined all over a plate. So if you'd like to know more and get some great information about the tropics all laid out in one place, SpaghettiModels.com is a good place to go to. If you have a good view of the northwest horizon, you should be able to catch the International Space Station uh, going from northwest over to the east. It'll be going right through the W of Cassiopeia in the northwest. It'll be rising from the northeast horizon, north, uh, let's see, north, hang on a second, why is this not working here? Northwest horizon at about 9.30. Uh, going through the haze layer and then making its way back over through Cassiopeia, rising in the northeast, and then fading at about 9.33. Lots of clouds out there at various points and also very humid, so this is going to have to be a good place where you can see uh, well away from city lights, but this should be one of the brightest things in the night sky, and time being 8.51, you can see that rise in just about 40 minutes, again, down into the northwest horizon and making its way over toward the northeast, again, heading through the W-shaped constellation of Cassiopeia. Easy to be able to see that there. More information about what's flying overhead and a great place to go to for more details, visit Heavens Above. That's Heavens hyphen above dot com plug in your location and you can see a whole bunch more as to what's going on out there. More information about what's going on with weather science technology, all sorts of general geekery, clean energy, and all sorts of other weather information out there. Uh, you can stop by my page and find out more. If you'd like to know more about coding, what it's all about, Code Crew, the ones who just held a uh, major conference for kids in the Memphis metro area with their Lost in Space Code Hackathon just a few days ago. The same group is putting on a coding workshop for adults. And if you'd like to know more about that, scroll down on this Facebook page if you're joining me on Facebook and learn more about it. It happens tomorrow, so there's not much time to sign up for it. And all the contact information is available there. A great way to know more about computers and coding and how really easy it has become with languages like Python and other ones that I'm not entirely familiar with, but something to think about if you'd like to try that out. That's all available, again, at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash austinonic, W-R-E-G. And also don't forget to find me on my Twitter page, twitter.com slash aonic underscore W-R-E-G-3. If you'd like to know a little bit more about that, uh, all kinds of great weather information. Plus, send me your pictures. Would love to see weather pictures out there. We don't get that many of them. You know, we can't show them if you don't send them. A lot of people do, and that's great. But if you've got them, we'd love to see them. So please let us know what kind of weather pictures you're snapping out there by sending them to my Twitter account or posting them on my Facebook page, sending them to me in a message, and we'll feature them on News Channel 3 social media when we can do so. So we would be glad to have you along for the ride on that. Check out my forecast bright and early tomorrow morning, Monday through Friday on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. Talk back live sports chat extraordinaire with Bob and Josh. Great opportunity to learn more about what's going on in the Mid-South with sports and tons of other stuff as well. Great chat to listen to on your way to work. And again, that's Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 AM and AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. Also available on the internet. So if you'd like to listen around there, great opportunity to learn more and call into the show. Great topics, great opportunity to learn more. All available again on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio in Memphis. That'll do it for tonight's edition. Sherry L. Crane, welcome to the show. Randy Wilbanks, glad to help out on that. Very good question, by the way, and we'll monitor the weather over the next several days to see if we get any breaks in the clouds whatsoever. I, for one, am a big astronomy nut, and unfortunately, when you get clouds breaking up a major event like a meteor shower or an eclipse, that really hurts. And that's something that uh, stargazers and anybody who loves astronomy does not want to see happen, but it does tend to happen sometimes. So we have to accept with the good with the bad on that. Questions, concerns, ideas, again, drop me a line, austin.onic at wreg.com or through this website address, wreg.com slash weather. Thanks to everybody for joining me. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more. Jim Jaggers has more on your forecast on News Channel 3 at 10 in just a little while. And and then also more information about uh, the forecast with Todd Demers 
bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. And of course, I'll have everything on the interwebs as well, so stay tuned for more there. Live and direct from House Onic, I'm meteorologist Austin Onic for that. Bart Thompson missed the forecast. Well, don't really need to know much more than the fact that it's going to be hot and humid. We'll just recap you for a little bit here. Uh, as of right now, we're seeing again little, if anything, in the way of major problems. The problems for widespread hazardous weather, according to the National Weather Service, is on the low side. You can catch the forecast scrolling by here for the next couple of days as well. And into, again, the next couple of days, let me get back to today, tonight, tomorrow, and see what's going on for you here. Tonight's low temperatures, again, uh, back into around the mid-upper 60s to right around the lower 70s, and an isolated chance of a shower or thunderstorm in the green-shaded areas down to northern Mississippi, but that's about as good as it gets for tonight. Now, tomorrow, chances for rainfall about the same place, higher chances, but not much else going on, mainly south of I-40 and the metro area, and high temperatures into tomorrow, another warm and steamy one out there with numbers back in the mid to upper 80s. Those are the regular air temperatures could get the heat index in there, but as of right now, I can't scroll up that far on the screen, but it's going to be in the mid-90s, so definitely want to take it as cool as possible out there just to be on the safe side. Drink that water. Again, you're going to need that over the next few days if you're working or exercising outdoors. I'll have more on your forecast tomorrow on News Channel 3 online. Stay tuned for more throughout the evening with News Channel 3 on air and online, and keep it tuned for more information throughout the rest of the evening and the rest of the week. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of Weather Overtime.